đã bố mẹ chui program được thầm trong đó là đun nấu của bà này à chui nó được đại diễn đấy program xa này ôm mắt tỏ mắt quá tờ tờ đây phim đại diễn vào mình đi so good morning everyone good morning so uh, yeah i've noticed that uh, there are only some some student of mine attend uh, I, i think because uh, right now as the second semester start uh, many students may not uh, how to say may not skip their class to attend here so uh, I, i think if we can have a record we can share later yeah just in case you don't want to wait but uh, you want to wait a few more minutes that's okay Uh, in any case, we'll be making a recording that we can um, share later. Uh, but uh, I think we can also wait a few more minutes. Yeah, okay. And Dr. Montun, uh, you already remind your student, right? But Yeah, uh, but um, the, the chat, you know, is flooded with uh, uh, the, new, the new class for the student for the second semester. Um, and I, I remind them of in a certain day. So I don't know. Uh, um, uh, I, I, th I think it, uh, I, I was confused with the, the duration. I thought that this, this week is, is in the break, uh, yeah. break <laughs> weeks. So actually, uh, semester start from this week. We, we as we should uh, have done uh, last week. So, so only uh, some students who uh, in the year five, uh, they do not have class in uh, second semester, they uh, can join us. Okay, let's see, it is um, 8.40 now. Um, shall we get started? Well, Professor Bunton, do you want to give an introduction? Yes. So a short introduction. Um, hello, everyone, and um, my name is Ke Bunton. I'm from the Department of Energy and Electrical Engineering of ITC. Um, so, thank you for this um, lecture from uh, Professor Sun Chang. Um, I think this um, the topic of um, electrical recall and electrical mobilities is. Uh, Uh, very interesting, especially for uh, the current um, oh, 
Uh, we can't hear you anymore, Professor. Looks like you muted. Ah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry, but I, I'm No you. problem. Um, so this is topic is um, a very um, interesting uh, research topic, uh, especially if it is also um, related to the topic that I'm, I'm uh, doing in the project um, under the um, Ministry of Education. Uh, it's called the Higher Education Improvement Project. Um, that uh, in which I'm, I'm working on a uh, different topic about the uh, e to group, uh, solar e to group, or solar uh, electrical uh, to group, which is a to group that is powered by battery and uh, photovoltaic generator. So, um, I, I was hoping to uh, study um, the the aspect, the, the economic aspect of the tuk tuk, and the design uh, and implementation uh, part of the tuk tuk. And uh, currently, I'm uh, I, I am I have a master student who is working on this uh, project. And uh, later on, there will be a PhD student who will continue uh, to work on that. And um, I hope that uh, the output is that we can uh, study the, the in in the context of Cambodia um, that uh, if the application if the Electrical uh, tuk tuk can be uh, an interesting or uh, can be a, 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 a medium of transportation that can be competitive with uh, traditional uh, tuk tuk. Um, so I, I hope that from this presentation on uh, all the I we can learn something new from um, we can I, I can uh, learn something interesting or, uh, or or something that we can um, uh, we can uh, share with the student. Uh, hopefully, thank you. Uh, thank you so much yes, uh, you. for uh, for hosting us, Professor. Um, we're we're very happy to be with your class today. Um, so my name is Carolyn. I'm from the Global Green Growth Institute, um, and we are an organization that provides policy and investment advice on uh, green growth. Um, and so by green growth, we mean an economic growth that is that is strong, but that is also environmentally sustainable and socially inclusive. Um, and um, the sustainable transport is, is a, an, a very key part of green growth. Chang uh, uh, Sung-yang, who is uh, speaking today, um, is our sustainable transport lead in headquarters. Uh, and he'll be very happy to uh, to introduce you uh, to this topic. Uh, and so this guest lecture is part of a full month campaign that we are running uh, together with our partners at Energy Lab uh, to raise awareness around sustainable mobility and electric mobility. Um, so for this campaign, you will see many videos on our Facebook pages. Um, we are uh, having these guest lectures. Um, we are organizing uh, pop-up exhibitions where uh, people can come and test drive electric vehicles. And starting tomorrow, we will have a pop-up at the ITC campus, so all the students can go and try electric vehicles at the campus. Um, and we're also running a social media campaign 
um, whereby you can win prizes. If you take a picture of yourself driving an electric vehicle and you post it to um, the pages of the campaign, you can win $100. So that's a nice prize. Um, at the end of the lecture, we will make sure you have all the links um, to the campaign so that you can participate in the contest. Um, and yes, we'll also have a, a registration of the lecture and some further course material for you. Um, so that being said, I'm very happy to uh, pass the floor to my colleague, uh, Chams. Thank you, uh, Professor Butcher Kim and Carolyn. Uh, thank you for the introducing me. So it is my pleasure to have a meeting and have a, I think it's a share the all of the information for uh, the e-mobility for the Cambodia. So today I'd like to uh, introduce the uh, innovative approach to the e-mobility. So uh, is it okay to start my presentation now? Okay, I will share the, my presentation. Okay. Uh, so you should all be able to see Changsun's slides now on the screen. If there's an issue, you can you can tap it in the text uh, in the chat box. Okay. 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 Can you see my presentation, Caroline? Yes, I can see it well. Hi. People are also commenting that they yes, can see I it. Yes, I can see it. Okay. No. Okay, uh, good morning again. Uh, my name is Chang Sun, uh, who is a lead in transport and sustainable mobility in Global Green Growth Institution, CGGI. Uh, today, I would like to share the innovative approach on e-mobility. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, share the one. Uh, before the start of my presentation, I just want to how you are familiar with the electric mobility. So let me ask you the one question to the student. So first question is, have you ever driven an electric vehicle? So just I want to ask you, the, okay, let me see the name. Chao Bani, Chao Bani, can you hear me? Chao Bani? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I okay. have ever driven an uh, electric bike in my hometown. Wow, great, great, thank you. And how about, uh, okay, it's quite difficult, maybe. In poly, in polyme, in polyme, in polyme, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, could you please introduce yourself briefly, your name, and then your major? Uh, my name is I'm calling Mai. Uh, I'm a previous student. Lab. Okay, so you have experience uh, driving electric vehicle. Um, yes, I have driven electric vehicle. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, my second question is: uh, What do you think the main benefit of electric mobility are? So what we can expect uh, the benefit from you know, the uh, adoption of electric mobility. So it is quite more difficult question. So uh, maybe uh, Kim Hok Song, Kim Hok Song, Hok Song Kim, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, please introduce yourself and then uh, uh, is it okay to give your answer to the benefit of electric mobility? Yes. Uh, my name is uh, 
Tim Hock Song, and currently I'm pursuing my master's degree in intelligent mechatronics and under supervision of Dr. Strong Zero. And also I'm a member of Dynamic and Control Laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, I think the main benefits of uh, electric mo 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 mobility are the, uh, uh, let's say, the clean uh, energy that is being used. It's, it's electric, it can be powered by uh, renewable energy and so regarding the performance, I really like the way that electric vehicle can accelerate. Uh, that very fun thing to do uh, compared to the conventional uh, uh, petroleum based uh, vehicle. Thank you. Thank you. Great you explain. And that's why I think the professor Putin Kim is uh, researching on the, you know, the, uh, linking the e e uh, uh, solar panel to the tuk tuk. So thank you, Tim Hok Song. And let me ask you the last one, last one more. Four tra, four tra, four tra. Ah, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yes. Please yeah. introduce yourself and then please do your uh, answer. Uh, my name is Pautura. I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Sarot Sang and a member of DC laboratory. I think uh, the main benefits of uh, e, e electric uh, el, el, uh, is the power conversion. I think it's very efficient. It's more efficient than conventional machine. And for example, when we stop the vehicle, the motor doesn't work, so uh, the energy loss is almost zero. Uh, I think that's the uh, one of the main benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I think today's lecture, I think it is much easier because of the, you are the very well understand the electric mobility. So, okay, let me start uh, my presentation. So uh, there is a four section. First one, I would like to introduce uh, briefly trends of electric mobility, followed by electric impact uh, environmentally and uh, financially. And there is a big potential in Asia to introduce electric mobility. So I'd like to just introduce the, how the potential of there in Asia. Last one, yes, I will hope to have a discussion with uh, all students regarding uh, Cambodia situation and the Cambodia potential. So <clears throat> as you can see the my contents, I, uh, today I'd like to talk about the uh, trend and market electric mobility and technology. And lastly, I'd like to show the, how we have to put up the uh, regulatory framework for uh, facilitating the electric mobility in the country. Uh, there is a, a four categories, electric vehicles, load, rail, water, air. In terms of the air transport, large electric planes are only used on experimental basis, but you can see the easily electric truck, also the, it is electric, electric, electric uh, air transportation. And water transportation, some electric ships operate basically for short haul uh, fluvial and lake application. Rail uh, is uh, also the urban rail transportation, metro and light rail transit, LRT, and urban cable car already operating in many countries. And uh, lastly, load transportation, electrification of two healers, uh, motorcycles and e-bikes. Yes, some students already uh, experienced of e-bikes. So. And also urban buses and the three wheelers and taxis is quite popular in these days. So today uh, I'm just focusing on load transportation in terms of the electric vehicles. So,
There are three types of electric vehicles on the road today. So hybrid and plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicles. Uh, hybrid, which, which sometimes we <clears throat> hold non-clothing. So this one is a hybrid. That is the most common type of electric vehicle available today. And the hybrid rely on the two uh, drive system to generate their own electricity to feed their battery. And plug-in, uh, it is quite, uh, something is quite uh, similar to the hybrid, but uh, plug-in, they can uh, directly uh, recharge their battery. And battery electric vehicles are powered only by rechargeable battery pack, nothing else they are there. So without any gasoline, they generate zero emissions. So if you see the hybrid method, the battery of the hybrid vehicle is charged by converting the kinetic energy of the shift Shift in shifting to the electric energy by engine and battery can be directly charged from the external power source. And this is called the plug-in. So there is a, uh, two types of a hybrid. So just hybrid and plug-in. And the, also the hybrid, there is a two types, parallel and series. And plug-in, parallel and series. So, so what is the difference? Uh, maybe it's a parallel. Uh, the parallel series hybrid, at the low speed, the motor accelerate, and at high speed, the engine accelerate. So it uses the layout of existing car and has the advantage of uh, being simple in structure and light in weight and inexpensive in price. However, the motor output is limited, so there is a limitation that increases efficiency in low speed uh, driving city drive uh, city driving is small. In, in terms of the series uh, hybrid, this one uh, is that the engine is used only for the power generation purpose. When the uh, battery charge is sufficient, the engine does not run, so the battery can be charged even while the motor is running. Uh, so in countries where oil is scarce and uh, the gasoline price is high and diesel electric hybrid are sometimes used for the purpose of same fossil fuel uh, or gasoline rather than uh, for efficiencies. So the to save uh, the oil during the war and there's a cases applying series hybrid to tank and uh, machine and worship as well. Uh, regarding the uh, pure battery electric vehicles, there's uh, uh, five types of uh, electric vehicles. So main difference between the types of uh, battery electric vehicles uh, maybe uh, uh, refers to the, their charging system, which influence the driving range, operation flexibility and vehicle weight, and passenger capacity and vehicle versus infrastructure cost. So this means is, uh, in terms of the wire, uh, uh, the electric vehicles, there's advantages, minimum battery amount of vehicle because of the they charge on the road, on the operation. So no uh, battery, so there is no weight, but electric, uh, ele electromagnetic, it is a charge, uh, on the road, so they need some battery. So about under the two or uh, two ton kilometer, uh, two ton uh, is needed the, for the battery. So, and the pure charge, uh, they charging the, uh, their battery, at the at depart station and the final station. So that means that they need more battery pack so uh, also it is quite heavy uh, than the other electric vehicles. And battery swap is very fastly uh, changing the battery. So maybe it's a 90 second, it is enough to recharge it, uh, the battery and electricity. So it is very convenient, but it is quite expensive. And opportunity charges, also it is very good and very speedily recharging the battery. 
So it is very useful, but uh, still quite innovative technology. So uh, we need to uh, uh, conduct some feasible study, how it is feasible or not to introduce uh, opportunity charging system to uh, on the road. So here is, uh, uh, so that's why is the different mixture of the charging system and the battery pack can be chosen including direct overhead charging and opportunity charging, ultra fast charging. So there's many advantages on overhead wiring. Uh, it is a minimum battery amount as the mini is so uh, it is quite usually use, utilized for trolley versus, however, also under discussion for trunks. And in terms of the opportunity charges, uh, charging system, there is a advantage, small to medium battery amount on vehicle. So thus reducing the vehicle weight. So space required for battery. However, as a vehicle cost is very high. So these days it is quite utilized in for the burst, uh, utilized for the burst. And fast charging and slow charging and is quite normal. So it is a minimum investment in charging. So it's quite popular in these days. So it is used for all types of vehicles, including uh, motorbike and the vehicles and lightweight vehicle as well. And battery swipe, last one, is quite uh, interesting uh, charging system. So smaller battery pack on the vehicle, uh, because of the, they are uh, often uh, the changing the battery. So if a sufficient battery swap station are available, maybe we can uh, put the smaller battery pack on our vehicles. However, it requires costly infrastructure and large amount of battery, limited flexibility as battery swap system are often tied to certain vehicle brand. So in order to uh, introduce a battery swap uh, efficiently, maybe we have to set up the, some standardization or the regulation. So in order to you know, reduce the uh, cost infrastructure. Uh, electric mobility market, by 2019, there were about 7.2 million electric cars on the world's road. But uh, nine countries had more than uh, 100,000 electric cars on the road. So uh, when you, when, as you can see the graph, global electric car stock, only about 17,000 electric cars on the world's road in 2010, just 10 years ago. But by uh, 2019, there were about 7 million, about 7 million electric cars on the world. So that means uh, the electrification of transportation is a mega trend in these days. However, the electric vehicle sales are increasing worldwide, but still disproportionately concentrated in few countries such as China, Norway, and the United States. So electric vehicle sales are only uh, uh, concentrated in few metropolitan areas as well. So the electric vehicles quite uh, are disproportionately concentrated in few countries and also few megapolitan area. Maybe you can find that the reason why the electric vehicle is so famous in only the metropolitan area uh, at the end of my presentation. So sales of electric vehicles are expected to increase to four, uh, 40 million by 2040. It would be representing 35% of new light duty vehicles worldwide. So maybe you can recognize how the uh, mobility market is shifted to uh, where electric, that is electric. Uh, it is quite interesting, the graph. Uh, I found, it, uh, found the graph in the IEA, uh, so the report. According to the IEA report, the hybrid for light duty vehicles would increase significantly in early 2020s. So hybrid steel is quite famous, uh, but uh, actually is uh, maybe in the future electric 
and hydrogen will be dominate in the transport sector. So uh, that means uh, in the future, electric and hydrogen is quite famous. So we have to uh, prepare the adoption of two types of uh, the uh, mobility system. So electric vehicles have a mileage of less than uh, 400 kilometer because of the weight become heavier to an increase in the number of battery as a mileage increase. On the other hand, a uh, hydrogen vehicle can easily increase the mileage by increasing the uh, compression tank so that so the mileage of uh, 600 kilometer for commercial vehicle is just, if, uh, is just uh, arbitrarily given and then thousand kilometers are possible through the hydrogen. Therefore, so I believe that electric cars and hydrogen cars are expected to, to coexist as a complementary relationship. So this is uh, uh, kind of the concept uh, in the future electric market, electric mobility and uh, transport market. So electric and hydrogen cars are expected to coexist as a complementary relationship, not competition. Like uh, is a diesel car and the oil car. There is a two types of uh, mobility these days. So electric car is for the small car and small truck and our vehicle, but hydrogen as a diesel car, maybe they are uh, very useful for big truck and big buses because of the, they are more powerful than the electric. So two types of uh, the mobility uh, will be uh, coexist and uh, maybe the our mobility market will be shifted to two types of uh, mobility trend. Uh, that's why the global car manufacturer already identified uh, their way forward and their way. So they ha they are trying to change their system. So I have all set plan for the rollout of the electric car through the 2030 and beyond. Suggesting, suggesting that electric power trains could become the central technology in this decade. In terms of BMW, they declare to uh, introduce uh, up to the 25% of the uh, BMW group sales in 2025 is electric uh, mobility. And they plan to introduce certain new electric model by 2023. Uh, and GM also, they introduced, uh, they would introduce 22 electric vehicle model by 2023, and they plan to exclusively sell electric vehicle by 2035. And uh, Toyota and Tesla, maybe Tesla is very famous, and Volvo as well, 50% uh, of group sales to be fully electric by 2025. So maybe you can recognize, identify, uh, what uh, the uh, mobility market is changing from the traditional uh, mobility to electric. So uh, why the market and the car manufacturer, they changed their system and the focusing area because of the data electric vehicle impact. In terms of the electric uh, environmental impact, uh, I don't know that you are familiar with uh, the Paris Agreement or National Determined Constitution, I don't know, but it is quite a uh, core area to tackle the climate change. So 195 countries uh, together uh, have a discussion and have decided to how to deal with climate change issues. So that uh, in 2015, uh, they uh, adopt, uh, adopt a Paris Agreement to tackle the climate change and uh, achieve the sustainable development in the climate change sector. So the national determined contribution, which uh, is uh, embodying countries' effort to reduce the national emission and adapt to the climate impact. So that means uh, 198 uh, countries they uh, 
a place to reduce the carbon emissions. So through the submitting the NDC, they declared how uh, through the NDC they show the how to reduce the carbon emission. In terms of Iran, they are placed to reduce the 4% compared to the uh, uh, BAU by 2030. But if there is a supporting from the, uh, the international society, they uh, can reduce the 8% the carbon emission. And Cambodia also, your country, yes, very uh, actively and aggressively uh, set the target 27% reduce, reduction by 2030. Uh, so the majority of NDCs identify transport as a mitigation priority. So for example, 140 uh, countries, 86% uh, of to, uh, the global uh, society identify transport as an important source of uh, carbon emission and thus an important area of intervention. So the most of country identify the reduced the carbon emission in the transport sector through uh, you know, the, uh, renewable, uh, using the renewable energy and uh, changing the Today's traditional modality to a more sustainable model, including electric mobility, and they are facilitating the uh, adoption or uh, utilization of urban transport, and also they are trying to invest in sustainable infrastructure such as a road and rail. In 2019, uh, according to IEA, uh, the global electric vehicle fleet emitted uh, about 50 million tons of carbon dioxide. It is uh, uh, the half the amount that would have been emitted from the same, same fleet of internal combustion and traditional vehicles. So maybe you can see the graph. This one is uh, traditional vehicles and mobility, and it is uh, electric mobility is a compare. So if you are, uh, so we through the utilizing the electric mobility, we are reducing the uh, you know, 50 million tons of carbon emission. And uh, to ensure that the electric mobility, uh, uh, to ensure that the electric mobility vehicle can unleash their full potential to mitigate climate change, it is crucial to further reduce the carbon emission intensity of power generation. So increasing number of countries worldwide are taking action to decarbonize electric generation, which is set for the reduced species, well to wheel emission of electric mobility over time. That means uh, even the electric mobility reduced an, uh, zero emission, but in order to generate electricity, actually there is a sum of uh, portion of the emission. So that's why we tried to utilize, you know, uh, utilize a clean uh, uh, energy resources. So in terms of the uh, Cambodia electric generation, uh, when we are looking at that one, hydro is a big portion, is the most of uh, uh, um, generation sector and the coal and oil. So that means uh, Cambodia, there is a big potential because of the your country already uh, clean, uh, utilize the clean energy for your industry and the transport and the other area. So if you are trying to uh, the renewable energy and clean energy linking to the transport modality, maybe we can uh, achieve the great sustainable development in the transport sector in Cambodia. So I, uh, I knew that the uh, Professor Kim already researching, uh, uh, researching the uh, uh, utilizing the uh, solar panel to the tuk tuk. So I hope to share this slide. Nhưng mà chỉ phát phát giá, nâng chỉ nạ phát giá nè vì thịt thầm chạy vì thịt cầm chí.
ดีก็ยังให้ดาวฟลาติโนนึกน้องนั้นโปรเจกต์ได้เพราะมันยังทุ่ยทมจริงๆคือจีโปรเจกต์อยากบอกกับฟูงอับรมกรามจมูกอับปทอมบอกเวอร์แบงได้เงินทุ่ยเตะตรงตัวหนึ่งทอปิกโซลาอีตุกตุกตุกตุกได้ปลายฟังหรือกับปลายเกียทอมด้คือยังเคยทานุ่งนุ่งอยากไปเยอะนุ่งนุ่งอยากไปเว้นกับปลาปลาตุกตุกกิฟนี้วิตุกตุกมาพอจมหนึ่งก็วิอาจมีนระดับเพียบขนมกาช่วยกับมันทอยพอบางพอตัวเดียวปลายฐานดาวิกากับมันทอยกับปลาปลาทางปูระกิฟนี้ได้อาจมีแบบพบมาปีเป็นอินเทอร์เน็ตจุ่มปูโปรเจกต์นี้คือยังตั้มมาจับดาวบานอยากไปเลยปีใบขายเพราะมันก็ยังตั้มแต่ตั้มมาจับดาวจะมุ่ยหนึ่งนิฟต์มาสเตอร์ขนมอยากไปเลยปีใบขายจุ่มปูโซนิฟต์ไปกวาดจังจูรูมสุภการในการโปรเจกต์นี้คือยมจังบานไอกวาดโจทุยการสุภาพนุ่มถนัดมาสเตอร์ในนุ่มสารติโนหายกวาดเตอร์ไทเจนิฟต์ได้เรียนในนุ่มจุ่มนี้อิเล็กทรอนิกส์หนึ่งประปอนไฟประวัติมายามันเทียดคือยมก็สมคำนาธาจุ่มปูนิฟต์ได้บานกวาดจับการสุภาพเจนปีสลาได้ได้มาสุภการติโตในคนไหนหนึ่งก็อาจมีนักการดำเนินการการรับฟรีของไอ้หนุ่มวิสัยตุกตุกที่ฝันนี้เต็มต้นเต็มหนึ่งปฏิบัติบอกไปพบโลกให้หนึ่งการไปพูดการสื่อมาพบโลกก็วิจัยดูการถอยในความปกติเลยปฏิทานการกำลังกำลังภายในจะดำโดยฝากการจูงประปัตทางพูดที่ฝันนี้หนึ่งการประปัตทางพูดก็การลังเป็นดูจมูกจับคือยังจองอย่างนี้แต่การฟันอิสต์ได้กวาดมีจำนวนบารอมแต่ตัวนึงทอปิกบางย่อมดีกว่าแต่ตัวนึงทอปิกยูโยนากิฟนี้จีดามในประเทศยืนคือยืนมีนักการจราจรฟันอิสต์ถึงอ๋อในประเทศเลยนึกกวาดมีนักการจราจรแบบไปจูรูมบริการเงินในขนมทอปิกหนึ่ง Yes, it is. I think it's a very great uh, start to uh, penetrate in the new uh, transport sector. So, yeah, uh, Professor Kim already uh, started to researching this area. Uh, it will be very useful and very helpful to uh, create new uh, new industry in Cambodia and in the new uh, innovative trend market. So one of the main uh, benefit of electric vehicle is that they do not emit any direct air and noise pollution, but this is increasingly important, densely populated urban area where pollution is a public health concern. And but uh, also we have to uh, prepare the the future, uh, the adoption of the electric mobility, the uh, 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 the environment because of the. Uh, Electric vehicle are usually powered by the lead acid battery or lithium ion battery. So sourcing the raw material and disposing of the used battery waste can pose a serious risk to public health and the environment. So uh, like the uh, Professor Kim's research area, also that the university and the research institutions should, uh, you know, so doing the kind of act, uh, research activity for uh, your, your government and your citizens and your peoples to, uh, in advance, we have to prepare how to deal with this kind of uh, the uh, adverse effect of electric mobility. Uh, electric mobility, there is a big uh, economic com uh, impact. Even the cap uh, capital expenditure, actually the cost is very high, but uh, most of the electric, the cost uh, in electric mobility is uh, takes by the battery. So the battery takes um, about 50% of the uh, the total charge uh, cost is taken by the battery. But there is a big uh, news: the the battery price is sharply declined. That means uh, maybe in the future, maybe there is a big. Uh, uh, impact, economic impact, and very advantages to utilize uh, 
the electric mobility. So have to the increase, uh, significantly decrease the capex gap between the electric mobility and conventional vehicle in the near future. So when you are looking at the motorcycle, say gasoline, the blue color is a, the course, the, uh, the is a pink, that one is a energy course, but electric is a higher uh, capital expenditure, but it is a, a very few energy costs. So if you're using the electric uh, motorbike, motorcycle, that means uh, maybe you reduce uh, the operational cost. So maybe uh, it is very good for the economic situation for, for you. And maybe you can see the graph uh, it showed the decline, the sharply decline of electric, uh, the battery cost. So EV costs are declined rapidly, basically due to the cost reduction of battery because of the battery uh, is very big part in electric mobility. So not only has the battery cost per kilowatt hour declined, but at the same time, the battery energy density and efficiency also very increase. So uh, there is a big, very green light in the utilizing electric mobility. And I'd like to briefly introduce the potential in Asia, uh, so electric mobility market. So it is reported that Nepal and China have the highest electric potential based on existing market prof uh, proliferation of electric vehicle in the country and environmental criteria and financial condition and policy is in place. So the uh, uh, Asia Development Bank uh, in 2018, they uh, conducting the research and then identified which uh, country is uh, the, uh, the potential to introduce electric mobility. So there is a four categories. So market, <clears throat> environment impact, and financial condition and policies. So when uh, they are uh, based on the four categories, they are uh, producing this table. So low environment impact, uh, the Asia country, India is a, a very low. And uh, low to moderate, Indonesia, Mongolia, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, Thailand, because of those countries, uh, not quite, uh, there's a big uh, renewable energy or clean energy sources over there, not a uh, good at the source over there. However, the moderate environment impact, Afghanistan and Bhutan, Bangladesh and Cambodia and China and Uzbekistan. Uh, in terms of the Cambodia, you have a very big potential environment criteria and the policy as well. However, uh, it's very few <clears throat> market and financial condition is, uh, you know, is a, without the, uh, the market and financial condition, maybe the Cambodia will go up to high environmental impact. So like the Laos and Tajikistan, so very big potential anyway in uh, Cambodia to introduce electric mobility. Uh, in recent year, electric policies and incentives increase uh, have been accompanied by the long-term vision to phase out internal combustion engine vehicle sales in the, uh, the long term and to achieve the 100 uh, vehicle sales. Um, so China, they declare 25% uh, national uh, net electric vehicle sales. And Japan, Korea, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, when they are set up the target of uh, introducing the electric mobility in their country, uh, these days they are uh, like to set up the, their policy and regulation, uh, mainstream electric mobility in their uh, uh, country development plan. So like, like this, uh, the government have introduced policies and incentives to facilitate the adoption of electric mobility. These policies and incentives take up various forms, policy, uh, national greenhouse gas reduction target for the transportation like this, maybe they are also linking the, uh, the adoption of electric mobility to the national policies and the scheme. Also, uh, many international organizations uh, have supported developing countries to develop 
a suite of knowledge material for elective uh, vehicle policies and making and business model and finance schemes. Uh, in terms of the P4G is a, a kind of platform for uh, sustainable development. They uh, tried to set up the financial mechanism to uh, facilitate the adoption of the electric mobility. So they plan to uh, mobilizing a funding and establish the funding scheme to support technology innovation and sometimes they're providing some subsidy or the loan to the private sector to create a new uh, business model of battery lease or they are investing in infrastructure or they have a consortium, established consortium or they do the, some business, a vehicle lease and other business in, and financial model. Like this, many uh, international organization and the government tried to uh, set up the, some financial mechanism to uh, facilitating the adoption of electric mobility in their country. And very interesting business model is Taiwan-based Gorogo company has distributed a giant battery swap station that can retain the 200 uh, kilowatt hour of energy for supporting up to uh, 1,000 riders in the area and announced new pricing plan. So they are providing convenient uh, the charging uh, method. Also, they reduce the the uh, the cost of uh, operating the motorbike. So unlike other electric scooters that is via the small outlet, the Gorogo is provided with a battery subs subscription and a network for Go, which they call the Go station, battery swapping station. It takes just six seconds to swap the battery for new charges battery. So uh, quite innovative uh, business model. And at the uh, first stages, uh, nobody uh, see that one is uh, successful or not, but they say uh, is a Taiwan is very successful model. So maybe it's a day, uh, um, Cambodia also there's, there's a big potential to create the kind of business model. And also according to the McKinsey uh, report, it is revealed that in 2030, East Kuta, industry will worth 200 billion US dollar to 300 billion in the United States and Europe and the China and the other countries. In terms of the in US cities, a rider using last trip, we call the last trip, that is a scooter, is scooter. Uh, last trip as product in conjunction with public transit will pay average uh, 80% less than the cost of owning and operating a personal vehicle. So uh, with the electric uh, mobility, there is a diverse activity, business model and business activities already created. So uh, maybe uh, if you are in, uh, look at that kind of business model, maybe you can also apply the kind of model to Cambodia. Okay, let us uh, see the Cambodia situation electric vehicle. So, as you know, it's a strong economic growth already done in uh, Cambodia, which caused the largest increase in share of uh, carbon emission in 2050. Yes, a lot of amount of carbon emission already uh, uh, the produced by in the transport sector. So, that of significant transport accident also. So the number of registered motorcycle has increased by at least 10% per year since 2005. When you look at the, uh, according to the GGGI report, they represented about 87% of all vehicle registered in 2018. And the transport sector is expected to have the largest increase in share of uh, carbon emission in 2050. So the, uh, actually we have to uh, urge them to take action to reduce the carbon emission in the transport sector. So this one is a transport is the biggest uh, area uh, in terms of the uh, carbon emission. Uh, so 
Uh, actually, the electric mobility is quite new technology and innovative technology and cost, very costly technology. So most of my country and government are very reluctant to introduce electric mobility. So um, that's why I think we strategically approach to uh, the e-mobility. So uh, in order to do that, I would like to recommend to focus on linking e-mobility solutions to smart transfer system, such as bus rapid trans lane or intelligent transfer system. If you, we are linking that one to the, uh, uh, the infrastructure and the system, it is more efficient. That means that we can reduce the higher uh, carbon emission through uh, introducing the e-mobility. Or we can apply e-mobility component to relevant national project. Uh, for instance, uh, these days, uh, the GGJ support a CMN city to introduce e-mobility versus uh, as you know, the CMN is a, a worldwide famous uh, tourist area. So in order to protect the environment, I actually said we need to introduce the clean technology. So that is also the one of the concept for uh, introduce electric mobility for the industry and for the country, also for the environment. Last one, actually is the sustainably introduce electric mobility. It is necessary to invite private sector in the transport and e-mobility uh, uh, the sector. So in order to maximize the reduction of carbon emission and air quality improvement in the transport sector, also it is recommended to other measures such as non-motorized transport mode should be uh, introduced uh, with the electric mobility to make it more efficiently. Uh, when we are looking at the Cambodia situations, uh, well, we can identify the four categories of uh, challenges to the adoption of electric mobilities. First one is a limited information. So economic and environmental benefits are not well understood and only 35% of people surveyed in the Ministry of Environment study knew what uh, e-mobility is. But today's uh, the ITC students is very well known about the electric mobilities. That is a very good uh, news. And policy gap, there are no policies on finances tax incentives to make electric mobility more attractive in the transport sector. And registration process for e-motorcycle is unclear. So actually we need to set up this more clear and uh, strategic uh, the policy and uh, regulation framework for uh, the government. And quality issue, uh, many, pe many people think technical aspects such as driving lanes, speed, and body design may also fall short of the needs and expectation of the consumers and restrict commercial use. And there are currently no national standard to ensure the only high quality electric mobility enter the market. So that's why the research institution and the, uh, the, the university should uh, uh, focus on this one uh, for uh, the government as well. You have to have uh, more real data and then the best solution to uh, guide the government to the right way. And battery waste, and as, as I say, there's a big uh, adverse impact in uh, the introduction of the electric mobility. So there are no recycling facility and we need to set up the more uh, concrete uh, uh, regulation before uh, the uh, introducing the e-mobility. So GGGI, uh, we are very actively under the guidance of uh, Caroline, the country represented uh, uh, supporting the Cambodia. So based on the GSHIP uh, Green Climate Fund uh, program, GGGI designing a financial uh, incentive scheme and financial mechanism. So in order to facilitate the e-mobility, e actually the incentive scheme is at the early stage is very uh, important uh, factor. That's why we set up the financial model to support a Cambodia government. So, so 
we are now designing the, designing the uh, financial mechanism. So through the financial mechanism, we are pro we plan to provide a subsidy program to the government, and then the government will support the citizen to get the e mobility more easily. And also, we are already conducting the study that one assessing the communication needs and found that the lack of awareness about the key benefit of e mobility in Cambodia. Uh, Changsun, it seems you've gone on mute. Changsun? Hi, Caroline. Ah, yeah, okay. Now we can hear you again. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Now I can hear you. We lost you at the communication needs assessment. Okay. Okay. Okay, we are almost done. So, and also we are supporting the CMN, uh, the city, to uh, protect the uh, world heritage area. And so we are conducting the feasible study, and then we are uh, based on the, our feasible study, we will suggest how to improve the transport sector and uh, introduce electric mobility. And so I would like to suggest three components for uh, Cambodia. So motorcycle represent about 87% uh, uh, of registered vehicles in Cambodia. So first of all, we have to focus on the e-motorcycle. So because of the motorcycle, high uses e-mobility. So high uses e-mobility enjoy a greater financial profitability in the long run as a higher capital expenditure is compensated quickly due to the lower operational cost and higher mileage. And also we have to focus on the city due to the relatively short travel distance, okay, uh, short travel distance in the densely populated city. So city-based electric vehicle need less costly charging infrastructure. So at the early stages, it is we have to focus, focus on high mileage and the densely a city area. And second, we have to introduce incentive scheme. So while fiscal incentives are employed mainly by the national level for risk and non-financial incentives are developed at the municipal level. So the both uh, the authority could play a decisive role in adoption of elective mobility. So financial incentives are given for vehicles and charging infrastructure in form as a direct subsidy and fiscal incentives. So at the early stages, Financial scheme is very important. So that's why the GGI uh, uh, these days we are started to uh, start uh, set up the financial mechanism for the Cambodia government. Lastly, it's very important. So uh, I'd like to recommend to a company elective vehicle policy and incentive scheme with national long term development goal for electric mobility to enter mainstream in Cambodia transport sector. So uh, lastly, I'd like to show the, uh, the, the video clip, which one is a sustainable immobility. So, great. Sorry, it's very difficult for me to <laughs> delete the technology.
Okay, thank you for uh, thank you for your uh, time. And okay, if you have any question, maybe we can have a discussion. And then uh, before going to the Q and A session, so I would like to hand over to the Caroline to introduce uh, this campaign, GGJ campaign. So Caroline. Uh, thank you very much, Tyson, for your for your lecture. Uh, very interesting. I actually also learned a few things <laughs> myself. Um, so uh, yes, and I also before I go back to the campaign, uh, I wanted to emphasize again that all the cool looking scooters that you just saw in the video um, will be on campus tomorrow. Uh, we're having a pop up where students can come and test drive the vehicles, uh, so you can all try them for yourselves. Um, and while while Tungsten gave a you know a very good economic analysis and and, and mentioned that uh, EVs can be more expensive, I'm very happy to to say that for motorbikes in Cambodia, there's a lot of cheap models on the market. Um, that in Cambodia, an electric motorbike uh, on average is actually cheaper than a new electric uh, than a new gasoline motorbike. So definitely come and try them tomorrow on campus. Um, and as I said in the beginning of the class. Uh, we're running a one month uh, social media competition. If you take a picture of yourself driving a motorbike and you post it uh, to the, uh, the Facebook page of the campaign, you can win $100. So definitely worth the effort. Uh, and here on the slide, you have the QR code that leads you um, to the campaign information on Facebook. Um, and uh, we've also added a link for you uh, towards the report um, promoting green mobility through electric motorcycles in Cambodia. Uh, if you want to read more about electric mobility uh, and dig a little deeper in some of the issues that were uh, raised today, you can definitely do that in that report. Uh, and it's a bit more focused specifically on the situation and the solutions that we see uh, in Cambodia. Um, so thank you very much, uh, and Thompson has time for your questions, so uh, don't hesitate to, to uh, shoot and, and um, raise any questions um, here at the end of the lecture. Okay, thank you, Caroline. Uh, I know it's a, I prepared a lot of slides, so that is my heart, how, how yeah, I love to the Cambodia, so and if you have any question, please, please uh, feel free to uh, ask anyone, anything, even my name, any, anything. Thank you. Uh, I will share my slide to the Caroline, and then uh, maybe you can, if you have any question, maybe just let me know, maybe later, anytime. Yes, and my colleagues will also share a, a short evaluation uh, survey to get your feedback on the lecture. Uh, we, were, we were doing a second lecture at another university later this week, so it's very helpful for us to, <laughs> to get your feedback. Hmm. Hmm. I have a, I have a question. Yes, Professor. Yeah. Uh, so um, I I want to know what what do you think about the uh, battery? Um, in uh, in the future, uh, for uh, what what do you think? Uh, what what do you think is the the future for the battery? Uh, what kind of um, technology or what is the of the call and uh, uh, the 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 future? What what do you think? Uh, will it get uh, will it get Cheaper and uh, how? Yeah, so professor, what what do you think about that? 
Yeah, thank you, Professor. Uh, yes, definitely the price and the cost of battery will sharply decline. And then uh, many uh, private sector uh, will come up to uh, the uh, battery, uh, busy, uh, battery business sector as well. So that means uh, uh, we can expect uh, sharply decline of the cost of battery. So uh, the uh, battery, uh, the cost is uh, the total cost of the electric vehicle, uh, the 50% of the, uh, the total cost is uh, taken from the battery. So the mean is uh, through the sharply decline of the cost of battery, yes, we can expect uh, more financial, yes, feasible of electric market. So, and uh, also the battery, I think it's a battery is not the, this issue, but in the future, uh, we have to think of the uh, IT, IT technology. So through the IT technology, maybe we can improve the efficiency of the battery. The means of we are trying to linking the battery to the smart grid trans, smart grid system and micro grid system. So the, the, through the innovative technology system, uh, we do not need to, you know, the heavier battery for the electric vehicle because of the we expect the more efficient and smart system. Uh, so that one also the good for the electric mobility market. So, uh, but uh, I hope the ITC should uh, research in the uh, waste management of battery because of the, in the future, maybe this one also the big, uh, you know, the obstacle to introducing in mobility and uh, uh, protect your uh, environment. So both your student or many people uh, have an interest in yeah, battery waste management. Thank you, Professor. Yes. Um... Uh, one more question do about the uh, charging charging station. Uh, I I saw that uh, you you have mentioned some kind uh, about four four type of uh, station and uh, um, what what do you, what do you think about Cambodia? What uh, what kind of uh, charging station that is more suitable uh, for Cambodia? Yes. Um, yeah. Very, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, very interesting, very interesting question and very important question because of the, in order to uh, introduce electric mobility uh, internationally, actually we need the infrastructure that is a charging station so but the first stage would be the uh, slow and fast charging directly linking to the electric mobility because of there is many advantages like uh, you know the increase of vehicle range with the low battery quantity because of the many infrastructure up there so we do not need a heavier battery for the electric mobility so we can reduce the weight of uh, electric mobility through the fast and slow chargings, but however, there's a many kind of disadvantages that most of the is a time, the charging time is quite long. So that's why I think uh, we have to look at the swap charging system. So through the, so the meaning is that we have the uh, fast charging and slow charging and the swap system should go the coexisting in the car, uh, uh, the Cambodia market. So that's why uh, I understand Jiji uh, Jai do, uh, doing the conducting the, some uh, other research for introducing the, the swap charging system as well in Cambodia. Maybe it will be very useful, like the Gorogo Taiwan based companies' business model, Gorogo Station would be the one of the models for the Cambodia for e mobility. Yeah, but but you said that um, uh, swap swapping will be very expensive, right? Um, in comparison to other type of uh, charging. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
That's why we have to strategically approach the charging market. So first of all, we have to uh, start it to the you know the slow and overcharging and uh, fast charging. But gradually, we have to introduce the new uh, business model. That means that if the more uh, private sector interest in that market, maybe we can reduce the also the the, uh, the cost of charging stations. So we can solve it. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. I... Thank you. I, I don't have anything else. Thank you, Professor. So, I think, yes. So, it is my very <laughs> great experience uh, having a lecture in Cambodia with uh, Institute of Technology of Cambodia. So I hope to see you maybe later in the future, maybe again. <laughs> okay, Caroline, thank you for. Thank you so much, Chang Soon. And yes, we hope that uh, in the near future we'll be able to host you in country again for for visiting uh, missions. But in the meantime, it's great to have you, you your expertise online. Uh, before we lock off, I just received a practical announcement from my colleagues that because of the recent COVID scare over the weekend, um, the uh, the pop-up exhibition that we planned for tomorrow may be postponed. Um, so in any case, we hope to see you on campus very soon to test drive the vehicles, but we're not sure yet about what the date will be. Um, and with that, yes, I would like to thank my colleague Chengson again. Thank, uh, thank you, Professor Bunte, and also very much for your active participation in our campaign, offering us this platform for a guest lecture, uh, letting us shoot a, a video about your, your very exciting project with the solar tuk-tuk. Uh, thank you again. Um, and to thank all you. of you, do not hesitate to, uh, to uh, reach out to us if you have follow-up questions. Uh, I left my colleague who's coordinating the campaign, I left her email address um, in the chat box uh, and she's also shared an evaluation form. Uh, we'd be very grateful if you could give us some feedback on the lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, student, and thank you, Professor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.